Off flat for color guard. Um, so today we're going to be doing a critique. I handed everyone a reflection sheet. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so I would like to take the first couple of minutes for you to just fill that out. Um, if you can do full sentences, great. If not, you want to do bullet points, that's fine. Uh, but do read over those questions and think about your style and those styles. So today we're going to be doing a critique, and to help with the critique, I have what I call popsicle principles. So each one of these little popsicle sticks contains a principle, either an element of design or a principle of design uh, that we actually use in our in progress critique. So what we're going to do is one by one, we're going to look at the artworks in a clockwork fashion. So we'll start with the one all the way over here. Okay, and then we're going to examine it using these principles. All right. So, say for instance, my principle is value. I raise my hand up first. I will say, in this painting, I think the value is very nicely displayed through the transition of darks and lights in that wagon. I can really see they have a strong understanding of where their light source is, and I get the form of that object turning. Okay, that'd be a good example. All right. So I want each of us to start by making your comments with the principle that you have. From there, we can open it up to some other answers, some other questions and thoughts about each painting. But we'll go down one by one. Any questions? For the next one, I really like how the letters are in like a very stark white color. I feel like, well, I have emphasis, and I think that that not being too much of a contrast kind of allows the eye to really be like caught by the foreground, I guess you would say. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I like how the guys use pen objects so that like it doesn't seem like like all of them don't seem like my objects. Like the, the green and the back has like the dark green on each side, and then the blue object um, with the light blue, and the dark blue, like showing how it, it like, some of it is like pushed in and it's like that. So it's helping to define form yeah. before you throw it stuff. Okay. And Mary, what are you going to say? Um, I just think everything's like really fortunate. Like, I think like what's well, objects big or small, you can tell what's in the back, and you can tell what's in the front. Well, it's a good composition. This kind of goes with the color imbalance, but I really like how um, not just cools are used for the shadows. I kind of like how they're switching it up, and I feel like pink tones used for highlights and warms for shadows, and I feel like that's very interesting to look at because it's different, but it still is very believable because the shapes are very believable. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Whoever has proportion would like to speak about this. Um, I mean, I think it's a proportion. I have a proportion and um, like, I like the angle that it zooms in to, so it's like pretty close up. But, like, I don't know. It just doesn't sort of like look like too close. Like, you don't know what you're looking at. Like, you do. So, I think that's good. I think the proportion of these objects are believable that that the directional descriptive contour lines um, make sense to us as a viewer. Um, I think if 
that lantern was off in proportion or that horns um, kind of circular nature was off, um, it would it would fight itself, it would be distracting. Um, but I think because the proportion is so accurate, uh, I think it helps. I really love the colors in like the French horn and that pink fabric and I can really see the highlights in um, I want to say this is like the canopies or some kind of like everything like that. Um, and then that like so that's also like some kind of teapot or like stone pot kind of thing. But, yeah, I can really see where the highlights are and where the shadows and how each object I can see what is more like in the front or in the back and the what's behind and in front of each other. And I love how used like the pinks in with the fabric and how then um, the candle cleaners or whatever kind of catch the pink that's in front. Like it's very defined of like where Also, the horn, how it's like a gradual change in color, and I can really see the form and shape. And in this critique, continuing from last time of our in progress critique, we will be looking at elements and principles of design. So each of you has these wonderful popsicle principles I call. Written on them is your principle. So as we go along in clockwise order, um, I would like you to comment at first using from the far left to the right. Um, I would like you to comment at first using your principle that you have. Um, afterwards, we'll open it up to further comments, suggestions. Um, near you on the tables behind for most of you are actual printed out sheets with elements and principles written on there in case you're having a tough time talking about it and not sure what to say, there's a reference for you. Okay. Um, what I would like us to do for this critique is to A, point out the things we think that are doing well or happening well in these paintings, but I would also like to give us suggestions of how to finish these um, because we do have a full week left of time to work on these on our own. So you really want to help guide um, every student that has their work work up here, um, just give me a second, Santa. What? I would really like us to guide. <coughs> I would really like us to guide every student of how to further develop this. Okay, we really want to push them towards the home stretch. And as I can see from a collective, most of us are right there. All right. So if you like something, suggest how it could be used throughout the rest of the day. All right. Everybody clear. Possible principles. Woo. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll start in the far left. I like that. With popsicles next time. Just a suggestion. But then no one can hear each other's talk. Yeah, you said it's called popsicles. Popsicles aren't loud. They don't pop. It's just no. Innate. But you have something. Far left one. Let's start with that. We'll call it number one. All right. So, who would like to comment first? Well, I will comment first. Okay. Um, so yes. with the far left one, that. I really like the color. Yeah, because um, the like how there's one color on like one plane and like a different shade of the same color, like that green thing happening up in the top left, kind of that looks really nice. Like how it's like a darker green and like it's just very, it's nice. It's okay. Nice. Yeah. All right, so before we move on to the third one, I want to make this quick statement. I know these are not finished. You still have a whole week on your own to paint these. I understand that. But you want to look at what's there and you want to project forward as to possible problems that might come up, as to possible suggestions of how to approach what's left in their painting. Okay, so. Take a look at what is there and look forward to what has yet to be done and how you would approach that and maybe give a suggestion, okay? okay. So, for the third one. It's really yeah. challenging. Mine doesn't have to do with my work, but I really like the colors in the um, like teeth. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I think if you repeat that same like, use of color in the rest of it, it's really tied all together. I make sure we're both up in the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Because <laughs> the colors in the sober are kind of what's on the horn, and it kind of brings the eye. I, I like the, um, and the center of the horn looks realistic. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can tell that it's going back into space and not just like a random dark circle in the middle of a big yellow ring. Chloe, you were going to say something? I was just going to say I like how balanced the world is. Mm -hmm. I like the stripes used on the horn. Yeah. 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 Yeah.